Hello everyone and welcome to another How Lose Caesar review. Today I'm reviewing a game called King Domino Duel and uh, this is published by Blue Orange Games and is very interesting. This is a uh, two-player only uh, roll and write game based on their very successful and very fun King Domino series. Uh, this is a standalone uh, game based on that series and uh, roll and write for only two players. Now I'm not, there's a lot of different roll and writes out there and they all seem to play very well with two players. Uh, but I'm, I personally don't know of any roll and write games that are only two players. Um, so if you do know of any, uh, please put a comment, uh, in this, uh, for this video. Uh, let me know. But I really, really enjoyed this a lot. So what comes in the box? How's the quality? Well, like always, Blue Orange Games, great quality product here. Uh, you have a great artwork, um, very nice looking box here. Uh, it is, they've been doing this a lot with this same type or size of game. Uh, this kind of uh, book type uh, opening here, the folding uh, with the uh, magnets uh, to keep it uh, tight there. Uh, I think it works really, really well. Uh, I'm actually a big fan of these uh, boxes uh, and it works really well. Um, it's got a nice little uh, clear insert here, um, which fits everything nicely. What you're gonna get in the game, uh, it is very, very simple. Um, you're gonna get the, a nice, big, thick stack of these uh, cards here um, and they are double-sided but uh, each player will need uh, one this side of it to play and then you're going to utilize the back of a different one for kind of a, a combined tracker for um, these little uh, spells that you can do uh, in the game but that fits nicely in there with the rules everything fits nicely in there you got these nice big chunky dice. Um, it reminds me of kind of um, I don't know if they're the same size as the like story dice, um, but a very very nice kind of chunky dice, but not too big. Uh, the iconography very very clear on everything. Um, they didn't make it, try to make anything too complicated um, because you're going to be drawing in these different symbols as well. So. Uh, very, very clear dice. Uh, they fit here uh, on the sides, and the game comes with two little pencils that you can keep in there as well. Which, again, very, very nice. They didn't need to include these, um, but uh, it is really nice to just kind of have these in the game, and you don't have to go looking for writing utensils, right? Okay, so quality components, really great um, box. The instructions are really great as well. It's a very, very... Uh, straightforward uh, game here, but uh, they have uh, some examples and everything is is really clear there. They have a good scoring example at the end of the game as well, at the end of the instructions there. So how does this game actually play and uh, is it any good? Let's take a look. Okay, so it's interesting. The first player, you can uh, determine how you will. Uh, this says the oldest player would start. We're gonna roll these four dice. At this point, generally what's gonna happen is that first player is going to be looking at these four dice and they're going to be picking one. Let's say they want to pick this one here. It's got two X's, which are your dignitaries. If you played King Domino, these are like the different crowns, right? The different uh, zones you're trying to get. Basically the same thing in King Domino. In your kingdom, you want large zones with a large amount of X's on them, okay? So I'm gonna choose this one. Player B or the second player would then choose two dice from this and say they're gonna choose these two. And then the first player would gain the remaining die, okay? At that point, each player is going to uh, now have a domino, right? So we're going to put these two together, and they can be put together in any, you know, direction, order. Um, and the placement rules are the same as in King Domino as well, meaning um, 
But first, we're gonna have to connect to our castle because one of these symbols has to match to a previously drawn symbol or um, be attached to your castle in some way. So I could draw, you know, something like this, put this one here and this one there. Okay, I'm actually gonna draw those in and put an X in how many ever. So I could put two X's in both of those and I'd put one X there and we're off to the races. In the future, uh, if I have one of these symbols, I can then connect, uh, I have to at least touch one. It doesn't need to touch both, but it needs to touch one symbol and they need to stay connected. Uh, so I can't, you know, put one there and one there. Um, placement rules, very, very simple doing that. Now the other player is going to have uh, a little bit of an interesting thing as well. So they got two of the same, which can be nice and one X, um, but what happens is every single time you place a coat of arms, as these uh, little shields uh, are called, the coat of arms representing the different uh, groups, um, we have uh, a bonus here that they can potentially work towards. Because again, these aren't as good because they don't have any X's on them, right? But that's where this comes into play. So this is a previously filled out one here. Um, but what happens is each time that you put a coat of arms uh, onto your map that doesn't have an X, you get to mark off one of these uh, squares that correspond with that coat of arms. So this is the uh, single dot one here. Uh, you can see that is more common than some of the other ones. Uh, and so I would cross off you know, starting on this side, one of those. And as I get closer and closer, what happens, you can see that some of these are marked off. As soon as someone reaches one of these, they get that special ability. Um, and uh, some of these you can kind of, you can save up and, and basically you're able to use that at some future. Some are immediate uh, that you have to uh, do right at that moment. Um, but these are really some cool abilities that can help you a lot in the game. And so there's kind of this other strategy of maybe you want to take this because you want to get to that special bonus before your opponent does. Okay. And that's basically the game. Taking turns. So on the next turn, the player who was second lap turn would then roll the dice. And now they're their first player. And they may look at these and say, oh. You know, I do have a one big, you know, one zone going already. Maybe they want to grab that with one X, but this is also two X's. That's pretty good. Um, you know, so then we go with that and the opponent determining, well, this one here, uh, there's only three and this doesn't have an X. Maybe I want to go for that. Uh, and I'll go through and, and quickly tell you kind of what those powers are and how that affects the game. Uh, but they would select those and you just continue on until uh, either one person has filled up their entire kingdom and their last space here, or both players cannot place uh, or draw. So that may happen, right? If they can't draw, they just don't draw anything that turn. And that's kind of terrible, but it's like in King Domino, if you get a domino, you weren't doing things correctly and you had a hole or something so that can happen as well. If both players cannot do it, then the game ends as well. So I'm gonna show you uh, kind of this game right here that was played. And it's interesting, actually, the first time we played this, I actually uh, think these are from the first time we played, um, we didn't uh, catch the special bonus that you can play with, um, which, is talked about, I don't know how I missed it, right here, a uh, special castle bonus. So the other thing that everyone has is a special castle bonus, and uh, you can fill in the roof on your castle when you use it, because you can only do it once per game. You can give yourself an X on one of your coat of arms. Um, and so as you collect that, uh, you don't get a fill in this so you know if you took say i took this one i can't use this special castle bonus to give an x on this as i write it in and get a special uh mark off one of these for a spell can't do that uh, but i could 
put this down with an X if I wanted to, and I would just mark off shading the roof of my castle. Okay, so that is another little thing that both players have kind of that special one-time ability uh, to do that. Okay, so what are the spells? What do they do? So the first one here um, is uh, you don't have to follow the adjacency um, rule as you put in the dice. So you don't have to, you know, put this one next to another one. I can actually put it somewhere else. Uh, but I have to keep the domino together. I just uh, can put this next to something that uh, normally I would not be able to. That is pretty nice, especially near the end of the game when maybe you're kind of left with some dice. Um, your opponent took the other dice so that you wouldn't be able to place it. And uh, anyway, so it works out pretty nice. Okay, so the other bonuses. This one here is an interesting one. You can split your dice. So you can actually split it. Now you just have these little one... Uh, one tile dominoes, if you will, uh, they still have to follow the adjacency bonus, uh, which you're going to want to do anyway, right? You're going to try to make large areas. Um, so you can split it up and place those. This one here, as the start player, um, you're able to choose right off the two dice that you want. Instead of just taking one, you're able to take two for that round. Uh, so you can use that. This one allows you to, after you've chosen those, just look at your die and determine what you want. Bam, I want that, or whatever it is, okay? Um, which reminds me, as far as the, there's seven different faces here, um, possibilities, I know there's six on a die, but there's seven different kind of possibilities here with the different coat of arms and whatnot. Uh, the uh, question mark, uh, so all the dice are not the same either. You'll notice, you know, this one doesn't have a question mark. So they're kind of varied there. Um, I actually don't know the specific, you know, like there's two of those, but um, the question mark, what that is, is you're able to determine, it's basically a wild coat of arms. However, you do not get to mark off a box for these spells here. So it is, it's a wild um, to kind of make a bigger area, but you don't get any X's and you don't get any spells with those question marks. All right, the other powers with this little lightning bolt reminds you that you have to utilize it now in some regard. So this first one here, you're going to get three bonus points per different dominion, I think is what they uh, refer to it as, um, but zone or area of that type. Now, when you fill it in, you have to determine or declare what that type is. So if I look at this, you know, I really, uh, I think there's only two different zones. I guess there's two different zones of a few, but um, so like there's this dominion here or area of the one stripe. There's also a one stripe here. So the, I have two different dominions for that. If I choose that, um, when I fill it in, at the end of the game, I'll get three points for each separate zone I have. So usually you're trying to get these all together. If you get this, this is going to get you a bonus if you can actually kind of make a bunch of different uh, areas. So you can get some bonus points from that. Uh, you know, in this case, really, I think the biggest bonus I would be able to get would be, you know, six points, three, three points, three points. That sort of thing. So that's that one, some end game scoring. This also helps with end game scoring, but is not dependent on the number of zones. You just simply get to put an X uh, or a dignitary as they call it in one of your coat of arms. And that's definitely going to increase your points. Uh, again, these are um, happen, they have to happen as soon as you fill it in. To determine uh, what that coat of arms is, you're gonna have to write that down. And uh, you need to cross this off immediately as well. So depending on timing, you know, you may want to try to see where it's most beneficial. But if you wait too long, your opponent might get that uh, special ability before you do. And scoring, you're just going to go through, add up. I'm going to have, you know, different zones here. Uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these ones with one X. Uh, so that's seven points. You'll notice I have this other zone, and if there was an X, I would score this as well, and it would be included in that total. 
but this zone didn't have any X's in it, so it scored zero points. And you go through for each of those zones, and whoever had any of those bonuses from there, and you add up, and whoever had the most points is the winner. And that is King Domino Duel. Um, I think it plays really, really well. Uh, there's a lot, again, you know, King Domino, uh, a lot of similarities. Well, it's dominoes, right? So you need to match the different things. Um, but that same concept of, hey, I'm trying to get large uh, zones or areas with a lot of X's. That's your goal in this game as well. Um, but the dice, I like the dice mechanics. The dice, dice drafting mechanic is, is definitely not something, you know, brand new, uh, but it work, it's one that works really well, I think. Uh, first player gets to choose one die, then the next player chooses two, and the first player is left with what's left there to add to their kingdom. Um, so yeah, grabbing the maybe the most powerful die is great, um, but in second player you get it to kind of a, an advantage there because you get to choose both of what's remaining and what may go well together. Uh, or you can look at your opponent and say, "Oh man, I they have a really big points going with that. I can't let them have that, so I'm going to take that as well." Uh, so you know there is some of that. Uh, there's not a huge take that element you know the powers aren't you know messing with what your opponent is doing it's really trying to help you uh so there's no take that or you know thing there the only element is um choosing the dice right and um choosing what's going to be most beneficial to you or you may be choosing dice that you know you just simply don't want your opponent to have um so that's that kind of a cool element of that. I do like the powers a lot. That's kind of an interesting element of, yeah, I'm not getting X's, but I am working towards special abilities, uh, some spells, as they call them, uh, to help with the board. And so I think that's a really kind of neat mechanic uh, that they utilize that um, for, hey, I'm not getting X's, but I am getting, you know, two, uh, mark off two of these boxes uh, to get closer and closer to using these abilities to help me make some big moves, hopefully to score some big points. Okay, so that is King Domino Duel from uh, Blue Orange Games, two-player roll and write. Uh, great quality product here. It is very, very simple, very minimalistic though, right? I mean, it comes with just this uh, stack of paper, the dice, and the pencils. Uh, so, you know, don't expect to a bunch of dice or anything like that, but the game is really, really excellent. Um, the quality of the dice is great. Uh, there is a lot of um, pads in here as well as, you know, you can, uh, what a lot of people like to do is laminate uh, a few of these uh, with a dry erase and uh, make them reusable. So, but really, really great um, two player uh, roll and write version of King Domino. And that is King Domino Duel, a fantastic roll and write game for two players. And that is how Lou sees it.